Okay, well, earlier this week, Congress named the 10 members of a panel which will investigate causes of the financial crisis. Former California Treasurer Philip Angelini, who's chairman of the panel, and joins us now from Sacramento, California. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Angelitas, for being with us. Great to be with you. Now, I know that you've talked quite a bit about what this panel is going to do this week, but tell us exactly what you hope to accomplish with this commission. Well, the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission was established as a bipartisan commission to undertake a very important nonpartisan agenda, and that is to dig in and find the root causes of what led to the financial system meltdown in this country. You know, millions of Americans have uh, lost their life savings, their homes, their hard-earned pensions, and the job of this panel is to dig in, to leave no stone unturned, and to reveal the facts and the truth about why our financial system collapsed. Hopefully, if we learn the lessons rather than sweep them under the rug, this won't happen again in the near future. But what do you hope to find out that may be different than what we have already found out with several other congressional hearings? Well, the notion of this panel is to take a thorough, studied look at what went wrong. The failure of the regulators, fraud and abuse in the marketplace, lending and securitization practices that careened out of control, and so we hope to do a non-political, hard look in seeking the truth. This commission's uh, modeled on something that happened in the 1930s called the PCORA Commission that looked into the causes of the 1929 market crash. Mm -hmm. That commission helped lead to the Securities and Exchange Commission and important reforms. It's modeled on the 9-11 Commission where Republicans and Democrats, Americans, came together to look at the failures that allowed the attacks on our country to occur. So it's the same model to have a highly visible look, uncover the truth without politics, and that's what we're going to do. We are going to dig in hard, well, and we, we, have, we have subpoena power. We have the ability to refer for criminal prosecution. It's important that we know the truth so we know what to look for, what to avoid in the future. Well, does that mean that you expect that the findings that you, uh, that you come up with in this commission are eventually going to lead uh, to perhaps new agencies or consolidation of agencies or substantial changes in the regulatory framework? Well, as you know, the President and Congress are already considering reforms, and we hope that as we go through our commission hearings, uh, as facts are unveiled, it will help the President and Congress fashion the right kind of reforms. But more than anything, whether, you know, they create agency A or agency B, it's going to be important for the public and regulators to know exactly what did happen, what kind of practices should be regulated, what are the kinds of things we ought to prevent in the future. And I just want to say that when Speaker Pelosi asked me to take on this job and when Senate Majority Leader Reid and the Speaker asked me to be chair, uh, they conveyed to me the deep sense of urgency that given the fact that this country you know, has seen tremendous economic damage. We've had over a trillion dollars in taxpayer money go to prop up uh, institutions like AIG and Citigroup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's critical that we get to the bottom of this because, you know, the taxpayers and the people of this country have been hurt very badly by what happened in our financial markets. And you mentioned uh, earlier, Mr. Angelides, that this is going to be a bipartisan effort, but already some criticisms have been lobbed against this panel, saying that it's uh, made up of six Democrats and four Republicans. How can it be bipartisan? Well, the search for the truth should be nonpartisan, and I will just say that I have been speaking regularly with the vice chair, Bill Thomas, who's the former head of the Ways and Means Committee in Congress. He's a very bright uh, talented guy who I know loves his country and I've talked with other commission members and I think we've agreed that if we seek the truth, the facts, that's not political. And mm. so I, I go into this with high hopes. There will always be people saying uh, it's going to be tit for tat, but this is not a political witch hunt. This is to find out what happened for the American people because, yeah. you know, w there were Democratic and Republican families, American families, who have been right. badly hurt by all of this. Uh, Mr. Angelides, we don't have a whole lot of time, but as a former treasurer of California, give me your view about what's happened in your state. It's a tragedy. Look, we're the eighth largest economy in the world, $1.5 trillion uh, gross state product. Uh, this uh, travesty here is a political failure. There's no reason the state can't and shouldn't balance its budget. There's no reason this state ought to be turning away hundreds of thousands of kids from college, furloughing uh, university professors and workers. Right. And I, ju I just hope the governor and the legislature get their act together because there's no way on earth this state should be issuing IOUs. Okay, Mr. Angelides, we're out of time, but thanks so much for joining us.